It was short again. So some people call that coming off of it chocolate or soft. I think since your brush has color on it, yeah. I think it started with the center and go up, lift. And thus started Bernie's love of having the Roadster and the touring car in the same year. Those are just a few of the extraordinary people that I'll reacquaint you with in the next half hour. Hello everyone, I'm Lance Schwartz, and this is the 24th edition of the Best of Lance's Journal. Jim Conroy's first bakery location was located in Lincoln's Rathbone Village in 1957. Ten years later, Jim moved his bakery to a location near Union College on 48th Street. This story aired in March of 2014. I just like to make good products. I like to be a servant, I guess he's gone. Jim Conroy has been serving Lincoln since 1957. They call it a labor of love. Jim is now 93 years of age. I've enjoyed cooking and baking ever since I was a little child. And his delightful wife of 65 years. No, I met her at church. <laughs> is also 93 years old. The church steps. Well, right now we're making flowers for cake. Yeah, we're making Even after nearly six decades in the bakery business, Jim still enjoys coming into work six days a week. Oh yeah, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. It wasn't I didn't like it. <laughs> Grace still puts in five days a week. Oh, I love it. I, I don't have any problem coming to work. It's very pretty cake. Jim considers himself both a baker well, and it's an a, artist. It's a form of art, and you, hate, you can express yourself with your hands and, and what you make, you know. He's the baker, so I better say it's very, very good. <laughs> we adopted the five of our children. And now three of those children operate the business. Oh yeah, they all grew up in the bakery. Joe Conroy's parents amaze him on a daily basis. At 93 and have them still coming in and helping and working and it's very unique to see this. We work as a team. They're fun to work for. They're uh, good Christian people. They're kind, compassionate, and they, just, they love what they do. And, that's, and you can see that. Finished product. And oh, by the way, they make some tasty treats that are loved by the masses in the capital city. These are all made fresh. There is a lot to like in this bakery. I like the um, macaroons. I, I like, well, I like them all. And so does Lincoln. <laughs> if it doesn't pass the taste, they don't sell it. I don't know how long we'll stay here, do this, because people keep coming in the door <laughs> wanting this and wanting that and everything. So we just keep on baking and then, and uh, sticking with it. I regret to announce that Conroy's 60-year-old bakery made its last donut at the end of June. Both of the 96-year-old owners felt it was time to say goodbye to the College View neighborhood bakery for good. But what a glorious six-decade run they had. Well, people in Seward County know Larry Barth as a 40-year member of the Utica City Council and 20 years as the mayor of Utica. But as we found out in this August of 2013 story, Larry also has become an expert woodworker. I hope I never actually retire. My wife wouldn't want me in the house all the time for one thing. Larry Barth has spent most of his 77 years in and around Utica. Yeah, I was in the land leveling business and also carpenter work and uh, like to make things, so kind of all works together. And what we're doing on the table saw is cutting in the tire treads. The goal for Larry is... Making it come out like it showed on the picture. Much of Larry's wooden model inspiration comes from the Caterpillar equipment he operated in his dirt moving days. I ran a D7 Cat uh, pretty much like this. Uh, blade goes up and down and turns and the, the tracks roll. And I spent a lot of time on that old cat and uh, it just reminds me of, of the good old days, I guess you might say. Larry loves wood, and he loves working with his hands. But just maybe what he loves the most is making handmade treasures for the people he cares about. I think I've made something for all of them. This tractor is a, a John Deere A 
I made this for my brother for his 75th birthday. This was made for my other brother for his 50th birthday. Larry built this milk truck and a solid oak tank for his son Brad. Being I was building it for Brad, I wanted it to be right because he would have wanted that. He wouldn't have wanted anything sticking up here that needed to be filed off. No, it doesn't surprise me because when he does something, he does it to perfection. Larry just so happens to done. live with his biggest fan. Barb is his wife of 54 years. I'm proud of him. He does a beautiful job and I think his kids are just as proud. It makes you realize that you're doing something that somebody will enjoy. Yeah, it's a good feeling. A good feeling indeed. Thanks for sharing, Larry. Well, in April of last year, I found out that Hastings College just might be the only liberal arts college in America that has a rodeo team. Be strong with your swing. Good follow through. Justin Noakes not only talks the talk, he walks the walk. So if I can go out and show them something, it's a lot easier than just telling them to do it. It's obvious that Justin is well respected by his team. Justin has been there, done that, and he can help us out in any situation. It's really rewarding to me to help them um, obtain some of their goals, and I feel like it's a strong accomplishment for myself when they get there. Yeah! yeah. It's a good time to be part of the Hastings College Rodeo team. Tucker White grew up riding and roping in Hershey, Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. We're a pretty tight-knit group. Tucker is a junior studying agribusiness and specializing in team roping. So we leave the chute as a team, and the header is supposed to rope the horns of the steer, and the healer is get the back legs of the steer. And when the ropes come tight and the horses face each other, the time stops, and that's when the run is completed. Six years ago, we started with three females, and now we're up to 18 kids, boys and girls. Everything's going great. It's like a family. We're very close. Molly Hermelbrock is a junior teaching major from Rosalie, Nebraska. It's awesome. I mean, we get to get a phenomenal education here and we get to rodeo under a great coach. It's a great opportunity that we're given here. It's a big honor to me because I know how prestigious Hastings College is and it's an honor just to get to go to school here, let alone do what I love, so it works out good. We're all here for each other. The quality of kids is top notch. Because where your tip is pointed is where your rope's going to go for the most part. As far as uh, expectations out of what they want out of life and uh, and in the arena. You know, they, they've got goals and they want to get to them. Got him. Yeah, Tom. One of the most impressive performances from the Hastings College rodeo team this past spring was turned in by Tom Littell of Elm Creek. He finished fourth in steer wrestling at the College National Finals Rodeo. And Valentine natives Bailey Dexter and Caitlin Reese also had great seasons for the Broncos. Well, back in March of 2013, I met a man who's affectionately known around Lincoln's Veterans Hospital as Barber Bob. I guess about 90% of my business is uh, veterans. And that includes veterans of all ages. The young and the old. And the super seniors get to look forward to this. When you get 90 years old, you get the free haircut. Bob owned two hair salons in downtown Lincoln for 40 years. See that? In 1970, mm -hmm. he shaved his head and wore a toupee for an entire year. Because I was selling hair pieces, I wanted to find out what it was like wearing one. His wife, he thought his wife would think he was sexy, he said. Bob had been retired from the hair business for three years when the VA called. When I came out here, I was only supposed to be here for three or four weeks till they found somebody. And then after I got here, I decided I liked it. Customers keep coming back for two reasons. Haircuts are cheap for one thing. Plus, I think I'm a pretty good barber, you know. I've got plenty of, plenty of practice at it, you know. I would agree that 63 years of haircutting could be considered pretty good practice at it. Not everybody can style a head of hair like this. I'd like to get out here about 15, 20 minutes early because again, you know, once you sit down in that chair there, there's going to be teasing and going on and Bob's right in the middle of it all. I'm not done, but your time's up. The good natured ribbing is always on the house. With what I had to work with, I think he looks real good. This 83-year-old thinks so much of his 600 loyal customers that he sends each and every one of them a birthday card every year. All the Januarys, Februarys, you know, I guess I think I'd like to quit. 
then somebody will come in and say, that was the only card they got. And so that makes me want to continue to do it. Bob guesstimates that he's cut nearly 400,000 heads of hair during his 63-year barbering career. He, he's a pistol. He's a rib. One of a kind. I figured if my doctor ever told me I, I, could, either, I, I could either play golf or cut hair, I'd quit playing golf because I enjoy this more than I do playing golf. Bob Taylor is truly one of the most colorful characters I've had the pleasure of meeting over the past 660 editions of Lance's Journal. In April of last year, I met an incredible young lady in Columbus. Her story is sure to inspire you. I've been dancing since I was in kindergarten, so I've had a lot of dance experience. Sophie Tate was just five years old when Lynette Hoagland started teaching her how to dance. She was just amazing. She could skip before so many other kids could skip. Lynette says Sophie has always been a role model for her peers. She gives me goosebumps. I just tell her she's such a special young woman that God's placed on this earth. Sophie was placed on this earth in 1997, and two years later, Jill and Rick Tate of Columbus adopted this darling little girl from Bulgaria who was born without a right leg. It's been pretty great to have Sophie be a part of our family. She's always, always with a positive outlook and always a quirky view <laughs> on whatever's going down. Rick says there is nothing that slows his daughter down. Oh, she's definitely got a drive to succeed and, and uh, accomplish the things that she finds important in her life. Yeah, I try to do everything I can. In 2013, Sophie decided to take on yet another challenge. A few years ago, I watched a YouTube video of a cheerleader from the University of Arkansas who had one leg, and I thought she was awesome, so I thought I'd give it a go. The difference is, Patience Beard at Arkansas uses a prosthetic leg, whereas Sophie prefers to cheer and dance without the use of her prosthetic leg. It's really heavy. I think it's about 12, 13 pounds, so it's, it's a lot of weight on my hips, so. I absolutely love cheerleading. Um, I made a lot of friends out of it, um, and I did things that I didn't even know I could do, so it kind of pushed me to my limits. Since she came home, that's just, oh, she's always hopped, she's always called, she's never, it's never held her back from doing anything. You are as beautiful on the outside as you are on the inside. Aww. And she has got a, such a good heart for other people, and she's just amazing. Oh, This sensational 17-year-old enjoys sharing her optimistic attitude with the world. Stop thinking about what you don't have and just um, be thankful for what you do have and appreciate what you have, and because it could be a whole lot worse. Sophie just finished up her freshman year at Nebraska Wesleyan, and I've got to say, it sure was a nice feeling seeing her out there leading the cheers for the Prairie Wolves, just as she had done so well in Columbus. Back in February of 2013, it was Metal Mania meets Fashion Flair for a Norris High School graduate. For Casey Shepard, making handcrafted jewelry is the perfect way to make a living. She's found a way to hammer, rivet, sand, and saw her way into a decorative utopia. Casey has been called a jewelry artist and a craft artist, but she prefers the title of metalsmith. I like metalsmith because it sounds cool because I mess with tools, and I think that's cool. <laughs> and this woman does love to create. I just taught myself how to do it and fell in love with it. I love fashion, I love tools, I love metal. Um, just a mixture of them all. She spent some time in New York City working in the modeling industry after high school. But after a few years, she found her way back to Nebraska to seek out her inner artist. I don't really have a choice. <laughs> it's kind of Im embedded in me. Um, I tried to fight it off for years. Didn't think I was an artist, didn't do anything with it, and then just realized that's who I am. Each piece of Casey's collection reflects her distinct individuality. Yes, it's an earring or it's, it's a necklace, but it's, yeah, it is one of a kind and it is unique because it is handcrafted and, yeah, I don't want to be like anyone else. Earrings, they make you beautiful. And her sculptured necklaces make you stand out in a crowd. 
I textured and full formed the metal R rivet. There are over 100 rivets on this. There's brass knuckles for your fingers and bold cuffs for your wrists. This is a sheet of copper that I textured and formed and lacquer sealed. That's the great thing about not being machined and not being mass produced is that you get that flaw of imperfection, which is beautiful. What are you working on, Case? Casey's mom, Jonna Mites, is very proud of what her daughter has accomplished in the past seven years. She has a huge heart. Casey is a genuine person. She uh, puts her, her passion in her career, and you can see that in her artwork. Make sure and drop by Casey Shepherd's Designs on Facebook. Bill Shuck graduated from Fall City High School in 1936, and he earned a journalism degree from UNL in 1940. Bill was 22 years old when he volunteered for the draft and headed off to serve his country during World War II. Long before there was a Lance's Journal, there was the Fall City Journal. It was way back in the 70s, and my first job ever was delivering newspapers, and my first boss ever was a great American hero. Bill Shuck started serving his country in 1941. We were just playing soldier then for about the first 10 months. And then on Pearl Harbor Day, we became soldiers. Woo! It got real in a hurry, it didn't really, it? And a, and a week later then, we were on the troop trains. I think they had hauled Civil War soldiers. Bill soon became a B-17 bomber pilot. On October the 8th of 1943, I made my first combat raid. Eight months and 24 missions later, Bill and his crew went on a bombing run to Marienburg, East Prussia in April of 44. We hit the target real good and they said, according to Historical Society, it was one of the best bomb drops in the entire war. On the way back to England, Bill's bomber sustained a direct hit from a flak battery. It started a heck of a fire, so I'd seen too many explode and I knew exactly what was going to happen. So I bailed the crew out and we parachuted into Denmark. Bill and what was left of his crew became German prisoners of war. That was just hell on earth, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Bill uh -huh. endured I'm two days survive. of intense interrogation. Well, I remember that back when we were briefed on, on the prisoner of war, what you should do is keep your ears and your eyes and your bowels open and your mouth shut. Bill says his sense of humor and his faith helped him survive 13 long months as a POW. At the back of your thoughts was looking at the wall. You didn't have anything else to do, look at the wall and wonder, am I going to be alive tomorrow? Fortunately, World War II ended in September of 1945, and Captain Chuck headed back to Fall City a hero. He's one of the greatest men I've ever met. Bob Ferguson echoes the thoughts of many Fall Cityans. I have a lot of respect for you, and I really appreciate you for all of your service for our country, and it has been a pleasure knowing you. Thank you, Lance, and thank you for giving me the time to tell my story. My pleasure. Okay. Bill officially retired from his daily activities at the Fall City Journal last August, but this 97-year-old still can't help but write an occasional article for his beloved newspaper. J.L. Schmidt felt as though he went to car heaven in 2011. This car enthusiast from Lincoln was chosen as the director of a Kearney operation that proudly displays more than 200 mint condition rare automobiles. It's hard not to get nostalgic when your mind is flooded with 50,000 square feet of pure, unadulterated automobile magic. 170 rare cars have been glistening, shining, and amazing car buffs since November of 2011. This is just not a big building full of old cars. It's an experience. Collectively, these cars are worth an estimated $5 million. We're the only auto museum in, in the Midwest that has all three years of the Ford retractable, 57, 58, and 59. J.L. Schmidt found his true calling in life. You know, I grew up with cars. I uh, grew up in an era when you could see a car half a mile away and know what it was and what year it was. And thus started Bernie's love of having the Roadster and the touring car in the same year. J.L. loves to share his knowledge of vintage cars. 
This is called a Thermidor car cooler. You put ice and cold water in here. Each and every one of the 170 cars included in this incredible collection has a story all its own. From this 1938 Rolls-Royce limo that's worth a million dollars to this 1974 Cadillac DeVille pickup that was specially made for Evil Knievel to this 1930 Lincoln one of only four of its kind in the world. You'll see Ferraris and you'll see DeLoreans and you'll see them in 12 Boy, distinct galleries the from the drive-in. People actually paid money to sit in their car, watch a movie. To the Chrysler Legacy section. We learned something new about old cars every day and you know, you never stop learning. That's the beauty of this. This is Elvis Presley. And one comment that we get most often is, this is more than I expected. So is my money. And more than I expected is the same sentiment that I would share. The classic car collection is located on the east side of Kearney on Highway 30. Back in 2014, I had the pleasure of introducing you to a delightful art teacher in Grand Island. Her name was Edith Pinkston, and she was 101 years old. You don't have enough leaves and you don't have any green, now what, how are you going to make green? Edith Pinkston has been a teacher for many decades. You have to shape it a little bit. Edith has a very particular teaching style. I let them try their own way first. Then if they're in trouble, then I help them. Edith remembers being five years old when her mother started teaching her. She would give me the reading and writing and arithmetic, and then she'd say, now draw. And that's when Edith fell in love with art. I think since your brush has color on it, yeah. I think it started with the center and go out and lift. Wanda lift. Dinnerman is one of the students that Edith has taught over the past 20 years. What do you want me to do? Wanda says it's an honor to be taught by this Holt County native. I don't think it's necessarily art. I think it's the way to live because she's such a good model on what we should all be when we get older. So far, Edith is giving Wanda passing marks. But she says that about every one of her students. In addition to being a great teacher, Edith is also a talented artist in her own right. So I was just touching on up a little. Edith is responsible for each of the award-winning paintings on this wall. What would you say this is? As well as this portrait of her mother and this farmyard scene of Edith helping her grandma feed the chickens. So that'll be your second mile. Mm -hmm. Riverside Lodge Executive Director Deb Friend is impressed with Edith's daily three mile walks. I always tell Edith that um, she's an inspiration to everyone that knows her. And if I can live to be 101 and be just like Edith, I would love to live to be 101. I am very happy to report that on May 31st, Edith turned 103 years old, and she's still teaching, and she's still working on a commissioned piece of artwork for a client. What a woman. Nebraska's Gary Pepin is without a doubt one of the top track and field coaches in the United States. And as the all-time winningest track and field coach in the Big 8 and Big 12 conferences, it's fair to say that Coach Pepin is a living legend. It was short again. So some people call that coming off of it chocolate or soft. When Gary Pepin yeah, speaks, so Husker here, jumpers of listen. Of Prepare, yeah. boom. Prepare, take off. That's pretty good. Over the past 33 years, Coach Pepin's men's and women's teams have racked up a staggering 68 conference championships. He's been the conference coach of the year 23 times, and he's coached more than 500 individual conference champions. Anna Weigian of Gretna is one of those conference champions. Anybody, I don't know if I would have jumped as well or as far if I went anywhere else, so I think just those numbers prove it and it'll continue to prove it to people coming in. Seth Weedle grew up in Hebron, dreaming of jumping for Nebraska and Coach Pepin. We get all these little packets of all this information. It's just like he soaks up all this and then he can just look at one little thing and go, I think we need to fix that. And then just like that, uh, that little advice can, uh, you know, make the difference of a foot to two foot in a meet. Well, I think that probably the most fun part for me 
is to see kids develop in their events and see where they start and, and where they end up. And then you take it as a personal challenge. But if a kid doesn't improve, then that's personally your fault too. Nice. Good. Many coaches care strictly about results, like but not Coach Pepin. There's also a personal aspect to this that I think Coach Pepin gets, um, and that's what attracts people like myself to a program like this. Corey, how was your back today? Gary was born and raised in Kansas, okay. but now, 33 sure. years after moving to Lincoln, he's a 100% Husker. Very strong uh, support of uh, people in the state, strong work ethic of Nebraska people. If you're the type of person who prefers green tractors over red tractors, you may want to avert your eyes for the next three minutes or so. Because Wes Schleep says, if it ain't red, leave it in the shed. This is a 284 International there. You'll find him at the corner of Farmall Road and International Drive. Well, my dad had the International, so I grew up running the International. Then you turn it on until you got power, you're ready to go. That's satisfaction. West Sleep loves to talk farming and farm alls. We use propane rather than gas. This is a B. It normally has a cultivator on there. Like it didn't have hydraulic, and it was too old for that. Well, this is about the oldest one that I have, and it's about a 1929 or 8 or something like that. All in all, Wes has acquired nearly 60 international harvester tractors over the past three decades. This is a Super M, and it's about a 19, I'm guessing, 1953. They put cotton pickers in underneath here. He's got H's and Super H's, and Wes even owns a Mini B. Wes has got international trucks, bulldozers, an orchard tractor, and an IH airport tractor. It was around with the airports and pushed baggage and luggage cars around. Well, she's the number one, you might say. Marilyn has we somewhat reluctantly taken part in her husband's big red addiction. Well, I've given him, like I say, a lot of static about it, but he could have worse hobbies. <laughs> There's always some memories on each and every one, you know, and it's really a... And you are proud that it's there and accomplished that. Everything's going good. we got to get the shine on for the show. Wes's so son Randy is giving 57 the tractors their annual bath. It is a lot of work, but a lot of fun just the same. The whole family comes together for this yearly tradition. Oh, it's great fun. The Schleeps are pretty picky about who gets to pressure wash the big tractors. That's why they're making me practice on a little red. you got to clean all that grease out of it. Tractors are like watermelons. Eat the red and throw away the green. Look out, Clay Center. The Schleep family is coming to town. Old trusty days. Here we come. Well, that'll do it for this 24th edition of the Best of Lance's Journal. I'm Lance Schwartz. Thanks for joining us. So long, everybody.